Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're taking a look at sound effects inside of Final Cut. How do you install them into their own nice little section, and how do you use them to effectively take your videos to the next level? Not to mention, we're also giving you some free sound effects, so let's dive into it. So I really hope that I don't have to sell you on how important sound effects are to your video projects. They can really help to elevate your story, taking something like this, and turn it into something like this. But did you know that Final Cut actually has its own nice neat little section to hold sound effects away from your other media? If you end up going back to sound effects over and over and over again like we do here at Motion Array, it can really help you to save time and keep you way more organized. So let's go over how to actually install sound effects into the sound effects section of Final Cut. But if you needed some of your own to follow along with, go to the first link in the description below and we'll give you 12 free sound effects. Yes, free. And a bunch of them are a bunch of sound effects in one file, so there's actually way more than 12. So once you've got those, take those sound effects that you want to install and have them ready to go open in a folder. Then open a new window by hitting Command N and go to this location, Macintosh HD, Library, Audio, Apple Loops, Apple, Final Cut Pro Sound Effects. And from here, you can figure out what category your sound effects would best fit into. But in the event you think that you could actually create a better folder, just hit Shift Command N to create a new folder and name it whatever you want. Then drag and drop your sound effects into the folder of your choice and they'll appear in that folder inside of the Final Cut sound effects section. Easy as that. Okay, but now that you actually have your sound effects installed into the nice little section so that they're easy to use and find, how do you leverage them to get the most out of your video projects? Well, I'm gonna go over some tips and ways that you can use sound effects to make your videos freaking amazing. And we're gonna start it off with number one, use sound effects to add realism. When people hear the term sound effects, this is usually the application that they have in mind, things that are big and obvious. You have a person walking along in the shot, so you add some footsteps in to make the audio match the video. Simple enough, right? Just grab or record some footsteps and place it down underneath your video, right? Well, you actually need to go a little bit deeper than that. You're gonna wanna take into account everything that's going on in your shot. Like, for example, what kind of surface is your character walking on? Because walking on grass? sounds different than walking on concrete, which sounds different from walking in an old house with creaky floorboards. Okay, so now you've got the right type of sound effects, so now you can just snap it down and it'll be all good to go. Well, if you do, then you might get something like this. Gross, yeah, the timing doesn't line up at all. So probably the most effective way to deal with this problem is to actually take your blade tool and cut up each individual footstep. Now what you can do is go to each point in your video where the foot touches the ground, or if the feet aren't showing the place where it seems like that's the most likely based on how they shift their weight, and line up each successive footstep with that point. Okay, so now that all that work's done, we can move on to the next piece of footage, right? Well, there's still another thing that you really wanna check. Sometimes when you're cutting up audio like this, you might experience the feeling of a sudden stop when the audio track cuts out. But there's a really easy fix for this, it's actually just to fade out your sound effect. You can do this either by grabbing the edge of the sound effect here and pulling it in just slightly, or by manually keyframing the volume to decrease over a couple frames. Depending on what you're using, this small change might actually have a massive impact by helping your sound effects not stand out like a sore thumb. But now that we have one sound effect down, let's add some more and fill out the world of our clip. Here's something to ask yourself. Where is your scene located? Like literally, in a house, in a city, in the forest, Using the footsteps example again, if you were walking through any of these places and you listened to what's going on around you, it wouldn't be completely silent apart from your footsteps, so neither should your scene. Maybe even right now you're in the comfort of your own quiet home, but I guarantee you it's not completely silent. So feel free to pause the video and take a listen to all the sounds that are going on around you. Maybe it's the hum of a refrigerator, maybe it's your computer fan running, or maybe the hum of a fluorescent light near you. Wait, why are you lighting your home with fluorescent lights? That's really weird. Who does that? you're weird. But okay, the point is that no matter how quiet your location is, there's always things going on around it and it's never completely silent. So now is the point where we add some sound effects or layer multiple sound effects on top of each other to make that place sound more like that place. Outside in the forest, try adding some birds, maybe some crickets chirping, the sound of a light breeze wisping through the trees. Oh, oh yeah, that means that the leaves will be rustling a bit too. 
Oh, and what if there's like a little squirrel in the corner running and he's got a little pitter patter to his feet? Oh, and there's probably bugs everywhere. Okay, you will reach a point where you can call it good enough, but once you add in all of those sounds on top of your footsteps, you get a scene that sounds something more like this. Cool, that's sounding a lot better, but sometimes you can have scenes that prove to have a unique challenge. Like, for example, where you have a crowd of people. How do you account for a giant crowd, each with their own individual footsteps, words that they're speaking, noises, rustling clothing, etc.? Well, the nice thing is that for groups, either big or small, your brain doesn't treat them as multiple individuals, it treats them more like one group. So adding sound effects for a crowd is a lot more like adding ambience in a forest, rather than footsteps for an individual person. It doesn't have to be nearly as precise, and hey, that link that I mentioned to you before actually has a sound effect for crowd noises, called Free Pack of Crowd Chatter, and it's got five different scenarios of crowds so let's take this and place it down into our scene and what do we get oh uh, it's close but it almost feels like everything is way too close to the microphone it's distracting and it's all up in our face feeling so let's take it down a notch and push it back into the background with two specific methods the first should be pretty obvious just lower the volume a bit so here just drop the volume down until it's closer to what feels natural if you were actually standing there in real life but that's not really addressing the main problem what we want to do next is actually make everything feel more distant, and the thing that's giving us trouble here is the high frequencies of our audio. If we just take the sound of me speaking into this microphone and display it on a graph, we can see low frequencies on the left hand side and higher frequencies on the right hand side. But what happens if I start to get up and actually move away from the microphone is we see the right hand side of the graph start to drop off a little bit, indicating that the higher frequencies are a little bit less powerful. So let's push up these high frequencies by adding a low pass filter meaning that only low frequencies pass through for us to hear and the high frequencies get filtered out. So now with everything together, we get this. Awesome. So now if we do this process for all of our scenes and make them sound the way that they should, it's gonna be time to start adding character to our sound design. And my favorite way of doing this is by adding risers to tense moments. This is absolutely one of my favorite sound effects to add to video projects because of how much impact you can generate from it. Basically, it creates a lot of tension and suspense in a very short amount of time. I'm gonna take a riser here from our list of free downloads. Did I mention free? And I'm gonna place it down here in my project so that the largest point hits right at the cut to another clip. Make sure the volume is the right amount. And we get something like this. This is really effective to use in a smash cut where you wanna change tones really quickly, or you can use it to cut away and leave your audience wanting more. But you can also use it subtly to subconsciously hint at the fact that you're gonna be making a cut. I actually did this in the previous sound design video that we did where the normal shot looks like this. And then I added in a riser sound effect to make it sound more like this. But here's the best part, risers are super easy to create. So easy in fact that if you didn't wanna take one of our free riser sound effects, you can instead take this free boom hit sound effect, place it down, then play it in reverse. And we get an instant riser. Really, you can transform a riser out of anything that has a harsh startup and some sort of an echoey trail off afterwards. We can even create one right now. I'm just gonna cough into the microphone that only I use. <coughs> then we'll bring it into Final Cut and we'll add some reverb and slow it down. Make this a compound clip, reverse, and now we have this riser. Feel free to check out that other video to get more information on how to take existing sounds and transform them and mold them to get new creative sounds. But now let's jump to the final tip on our list, transitions. Maybe you're like me and the only crazy thing that happens in your video is maybe a new shot will come in by flipping across the screen. Well, these transitions are still an excellent opportunity to add some character to your video because adding the sound of what's ever happening on screen can help your transitions to have a lot more of a positive impact. Imagine, for example, that I'm talking about some sort of a glitch giving me problems and I use that as a way to transition into the next shot. Having just the visuals is okay, but it's a lot more impactful if on top of those visuals, I have the corresponding audio happening underneath it. It doesn't even have to be a lot. In fact, keeping the volume down and the effect subtle can really work to your advantage. 
If you've seen any of our other videos, you've probably seen this transition of just a simple movement from one side of the screen to the other. And this is an awesome opportunity to use a classic whoosh sound effect so that you don't just see the movement, you feel it as well. But if the transition that you're using has directional movement, this can be a really great opportunity to take it up to the next level by using what's called audio panning. We can actually add an audio pan here and keyframe it to start sounding like it's coming from one side and then move towards the other side. The result is almost like it's tricking your brain into really believing that you're experiencing that transition. But at the end of the day, what I really wanna leave you with is just a simple challenge to start putting more time and effort into your audio. Think about how much time you put into your visuals with things like composition, color grading, even visual effects. Imagine if you took that same amount of time you put into your visuals and put it into your audio. I guarantee that this is gonna be one of the easiest ways to start helping your videos stand out from the crowd. But guys, that's it. I really hope that you found this video helpful and that you can use some of these tips to help make your videos even more awesome. And feel free to take those free sound effects and use them in your projects wherever you see fit. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.